and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. The federal government must do this. Governor Andrew Cuomo has been leading the charge, begging the federal government to send in the military and treat the coronavirus crisis as a time of war. Look at this train right there hauling dozens of tanks. Yep, military tanks right through Diamond Bar. You might see it rolling through Southern California this evening. So I'm 155 north past an exit 40. I just passed like 50 Humvees all heading north like probably towards Chicago. And there's just a sea of them. activated or something. They're probably going to secure Chicago because of this virus, I'm guessing. This, this row of Humvees just goes on for days big five ton in the front, but I've been passing these for like 20 minutes. This is crazy, but yeah, I bet you they're going to six, six Now, years. what happened the other day, which precipitated this, and I'm the first one to tell you, was on Twitter, I saw pictures and videos of seemingly miles of tanks and, and military vehicles, thousands of troops, and people were asking, this is for all to do no swabs. Trump casting this crisis as an unprecedented battle. I view it as a, uh, in a sense, a wartime president. I mean, that's what we're fighting. I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a very tough situation. It's the invisible enemy. That's always the toughest enemy, the invisible enemy. But we're going to defeat the First invisible thing, enemy. Are we looking at potential martial law here? And what is martial law? Okay, potential, yes, everything is potential. Martial law is the replacement of civilian law, the Constitution, habeas corpus, courts and the like, with a military tribunal. Seeking new emergency powers that would potentially ask chief judges to detain people indefinitely without trial during emergency According situations. According to Politico, the DOJ's report details the department's request to lawmakers on a series of topics ranging from statute of limitations to asylums to the way court hearings are conducted. The requests also propose that Congress grant Attorney General William Barr power to ask the chief judge of any district court to pause court proceedings in times of this emergency. This is a conservative writer whose work has appeared in the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, and the Detroit News and Free Press. He says the actions taken by governors, especially Governor Whitmer, are already martial law-like in their scope using laws he does not believe would stand up to legal challenges. He says it'd be more honest and lawful if the declaration of martial law was simply made. But he has effectively in many areas declared martial law without actually declaring martial law. Any end should never justify it. You want to establish a framework of martial law, which is ultimate authority and enforcement uh, we have the capacity to do that, but we are not at this moment the feeling that. also itself. spoke to the issue of making sure the public complies with the need to stop the spread of the virus, even at the expense of some personal liberties, including use of the National Guard. Uh, we have the ability to martial law and things like that can layer um, uh, new requirements and authority. If we feel the necessity to do that, we can Tomorrow, do that. the National Guard will be working with local law enforcement going door to door in our coastal communities, asking people if they've come from New York and asking them for their contact information. Obviously, we will be doing our best to target those homes where we know uh, people are likely to have come from State New York. State troopers began pulling drivers over if they have New York license plates. Eyewitness News reporter Rob Nesbitt spoke with one of those drivers. He's here now with the new details. A mandatory checkpoint has been set up here on Interstate 95 in Hopkinton, where all drivers from New York are required to stop and register themselves with the National Guard if they plan on staying. In so if you know of a shop that's failing to do as asked, give them a call and ask them to do what's required. Remind them, and if they won't, refer them. Because if we see continued noncompliance, they'll wind up facing misdemeanor charge, and DWP will step in 
and shut off their water and power. You know who you are. You need to stop it. This is your chance to step up and to shut it down, because if you don't, we will shut you down. that the critics are in the same situation that China was in just a month ago, it seems like they weren't creative enough to come up with their own solutions. After the coronavirus ravaged Europe, governments across the continent started enforcing lockdowns. People confined to their homes, streets virtually empty, just like in China at the height of the outbreak. Now, as governments across the world implement a state of emergency, with that comes increasing concern about a potential abuse of power. This as authorities use digital tech technology in order to carry out contact tracing, which is a mainstay of infectious disease control. The worry is that this is going to open the doors to far more invasive forms of government snooping later on down the road. ...in fighting COVID-19 with just two simple steps. One, download Trace Together and help those around you to set it up. Two, turn on your Bluetooth. And it is as simple as that. Get peace of mind for you and your family through community-driven contact tracing. Trace Together helps contact tracers notify you more quickly if you're close contact with a COVID-19 case, whether or not you know Imagine this, Rick. You voluntarily take a test to see whether you have COVID-19, mm -hmm. and your name goes into a database, mm -hmm. and that's terrific. Now, let's say you're positive. When do you find out that that database, that cloud, is a part of your phone, your social network? Mm. So you walk into a place, and somebody says, oh, Rick, ooh. You're positive. Wait a minute. How do you know that? Well, that's here. Or the vaccine is up. Rick, you haven't taken your vaccine. You go to pay and the ATM won't take your money. It's a penalty. It, this is, now is you physically wait. tracking travelers going too far. Weigh in right now at 12news.com slash bullhorn. We're asking because that is exactly what's going down right now in Hong Kong. Electronic wristbands. You see right there, starting tomorrow, Anyone getting off a plane has to go into a mandatory two-week self-quarantine in Hong Kong, and the government will track their every move with one of these electronic wristbands to make sure that they're actually staying home. President Trump declared today a national day of prayer for all Americans. In his statement, the president writes, quote, I urge Americans of all faiths and religious traditions and backgrounds to offer prayers for all those affected, including people who have suffered harm or lost loved ones. Because unquote. we have to do that. I'd love to have it open by Easter. OK, I would oh, love wow. to have it open okay. by Easter. I will, I will tell you that Listen. right now. I would love to have that. It's such an important day for other reasons, but I'll make it an important day for this, too. I would love to have the country opened up and uh, just raring to go by Easter. Easter is a very special day for me. And I see it's sort of in that timeline that I'm thinking about. And I say, wouldn't it be great to have all of the churches full? You know, the churches aren't allowed, essentially, to have much of a congregation there. And most of them I watched on Sunday online. And he was terrific, by the way. But online is never going to be like being there. So I think Easter Sunday, and you'll have packed churches all over our country. I think it would be a beautiful time. At the Vatican, time. Pope Francis urged for a culture of solidarity and care. He led the faithful in the yeah. Lord's Prayer across all denominations. Yeah. Rally once again on Friday in a worldwide blessing, usually reserved only for Christmas and Easter. Pater Noster, qui es in celis. Sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat reignum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Pope Francis's recitation of the Lord's Prayer at the Vatican March 25th was broadcast worldwide, enabling Christians of all denominations to take part in a plea that God would end the coronavirus pandemic. Sotto la tua protezione, cerchiamo rifugio, Santa Madre di Dio. A tutti i cristiani, a tutti le uomini e donne di buona volontà che pregano per questo momento, tutti uniti, qualsiasi sia la tradizione religiosa, 
alla quale appartiene. Further, I am directing all non-essential retail businesses to indefinitely close their physical stores to the public effective at 9 p.m. tonight. Only, and by the way, 9 p.m. in particular out of respect of the We're Sabbath. A long and tough battle against the virus. That's why we're announcing today that businesses will now be closed on Sundays, except for gas stations, pharmacies, convenience stores, and takeout in restaurants. It will be an opportunity for our workers to get I some made a rest. Decision to seek an arrest warrant for the pastor of a local church who intentionally and repeatedly chose to disregard the orders set in place by our president, our governor, the CDC, and the Hillsborough County Emergency Policy Group. His reckless disregard for human life put hundreds of people in his congregation at risk and thousands of residents who may interact with them this week in danger. This is Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, co-founder of the River at Tampa Bay Church. Investigators say he turned himself into the Hernando County Jail this afternoon on charges of unlawful assembly and violating quarantine orders during the public health emergency. Brown was freed a short time later after posting bail. And good morning, everybody. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is the New York Stock Exchange. The trading day is just beginning on Wall Street, and there are fears that the Dow will drop and drop quickly, and we're already seeing that futures over the weekend were down so much that they actually had to put a, an emergency trigger that stopped trading, and the expectation and fear is that we will see markets in free fall this morning here in the U.S., as they have done in the global markets already today. It's the S&P 500 on Wednesday, March 18th, when the index plunged more than 7%, triggering something called a circuit breaker. You can see it right here. At 12.56 p.m., trading was halted for a full 15 minutes. It was the fourth circuit breaker in less than two weeks. As markets went haywire on fears that the coronavirus would cause a global economic meltdown, circuit breakers halted trading on March 9th, 12th, and 16th as well. It is now clear that we have entered a recession as bad or worse than in 2009. As fears remain high surrounding the spread of the coronavirus, countries around the world are taking extreme measures to keep from infecting their citizens. And it could turn into the latest push for a cashless society. Well, RT's Rachel Blevins has the details. Now, the World Health Organization is also warning that COVID-19 can be spread through banknotes. A spokesperson suggested people should wash their hands and avoid touching their faces after handling cash, and they should use contactless payments whenever possible. This is China covered in pollution last year. But this year, the skies are clear. That's because the coronavirus epidemic had brought much of the country to a standstill for several weeks, causing a huge drop in pollutants like nitrogen dioxide, a harmful gas that's emitted when burning fossil fuel. Compared to previous years, it's below typical levels. If you close down factories or reduce the amount of cars on the road, you're going to reduce the pollution levels. Pollution is dropping rapidly in cities around the world. In New York, researchers saw carbon emissions from cars and trucks fall nearly 50 percent compared to this time last year. How surprised were you about this drastic decline in pollution? So we were really surprised that's happened over the past week. Um, 
it will be interesting to see if that continues. It's up to us to demand what we want from our governments in coming back to going to keep it clean. Good morning. New York City's Times Square is cleared out, and that is exactly what the mayor and governor of New York want to see. People staying home, especially now that nearly 100 people have died here in New York due to the coronavirus. from Dallas to Dubai and it's so silent unbelievable all due to coronavirus man a lot has changed in one week soldiers, lockdowns. Whenever communist China does it, the Western media loves to call it all authoritarianism. But what even makes these measures democratic or not? At a time of crisis, shouldn't people be focusing on which measures are the most effective?